In this lecture, we will be examining the history of what has become known as the Northwest Indian War, which was fought primarily in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. The law laid out stages by which territories could become new states. The area north and west of the Ohio River was to be divided into at least three territories. You can see that it's the modern-day states of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, parts of Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Territories would go through three successive stages of government as population increased. The Northwest Ordinance offered the following language with regard to Native Americans in the territories. This is a quote. The utmost good faith shall always be observed toward the Indians. The land and property shall never be taken without their consent. And in their property, rights, and liberty, they shall never be invaded or disturbed. Unfortunately, the good intentions described in this document did not always match the reality of conflict between white settlers and native groups in the Old Northwest. Native Americans, um, the part of the backdrop to the Northwest Indian War, were angry about westward expansion. Some did not recognize U.S. authority. Others rejected U.S. policies and legislation. Uh, in addition, British agents were still active in the region. Some of these were commercial traders, others directly in the ploy, working in the employ, working on behalf of the British government. There were a number of conflicts uh, prior to the outbreak of war with white settlers. Native Americans had conducted raids on villages and individual settlers, and in retaliation, white settlers had attacked Native Americans, uh, even peaceful groups. One of the first attempts to deal with the conflict in the Northwest Territories was known as the Harmar Campaign, named after General Josiah Harmar. The campaign focused on expeditions into Shawnee and Miami lands in Indiana and Ohio. The campaign was in retaliation for killings of white settlers. The troops marched from Fort Washington, which is present-day Cincinnati, up the Miami River. Um, at the Battle of Pumpkin Fields, American military forces suffered tremendous losses. Nearly 40% of the troops drank out of a total of some 540 regulars and militia. The battle supposedly received its name from the steaming skulls of scalped American soldiers which looked to Native Americans like cooked pumpkins. At this point this was the worst defeat of US forces at the hands of Native Americans. Arthur St. Clair was the next to lead an expedition. He was governor of Northwest Territory. He was also a military general in the Revolutionary War, which is where he became acquainted with George Washington, although he didn't have a lot of combat experience. He was much more of an uh, administrative leader during that war. He was picked by Washington to lead an expedition against Native American groups in Ohio country. St. Clair had something of a reputation for arrogance, and he was not especially skilled at diplomacy. He became convinced Native Americans wanted war and he refused to consider alternatives to a full-blown military campaign. His arrogance really got him into trouble. The pivotal battle of this campaign is the Battle of Wabash, which is also known, or sometimes better known, as St. Clair's defeat. St. Clair and his troops faced the Western Confederacy, a unified umbrella of Native American groups led by Little Turtle, the defeat on the Harmar campaign was nothing compared with the Battle of the Wabash. This became the greatest defeat of a U.S. army inflicted by Native Americans. Out of a thousand troops led by St. Clair, less than 100 escaped unharmed. Over 600 troops were killed or captured, with approximately 250 more wounded. This stunning defeat led Washington and Congress to push for the creation of a new American military force that could properly conduct a war against the Indians in the Northwest, a move away from uh, local militias and toward a national, a federal military. Ohio country is where much of the 
conflict was taking place. Native American groups in the Ohio country, for the most part, celebrated these early victories. In the view of many Native Americans, they had defeated the mighty U.S. military, and quite a few Native American leaders naively believed they could push white settlers completely out of the region after these two victories. The U.S. military continued to struggle to hold forts in the Ohio country. At the same time, British agents were still lurking around the region, keeping alive the fading idea that the British might once again ally themselves with Native Americans. Little Turtle, however, was, was wary of uh, what was happening. He did not underestimate the power of the young United States like many of his contemporaries. Unlike many other Native American leaders, he had a clear vision of just how rapidly white population was growing in the region and how difficult it would be to reverse the waves of white settlement that had already taken place in the Ohio country. George Washington uh, was enraged by these back-to-back -back defeats and he wanted the situation resolved. He turned to an old friend to lead the next campaign. That friend was Anthony Wayne who had served with distinction in a number of major revolutionary war battles. Some of his most impressive victories came against numerically superior opponents. His nickname refers to his notorious temper. He was known to fly into fits of rage at incompetence or cowardice by his subordinates. Wayne trained and led the new Legion of the United States. This is the army that was authorized by, authorized by Congress to put an end to the Northwest Indian War. This was the first um, attempt at basic training for regular U.S. Army recruits. It was highly successful in producing battle-ready forces. Wayne and his troops spent the period from 1792 to 94 training and drilling and training and drilling and training and drilling ad nauseum to the point where his soldiers uh, frequently complained of boredom more than anything else, but he did produce an effective fighting force. The Battle of Fallen Timbers is the uh, final battle in the Northwest Indian War. It took place on August 20th of 1794. The battle's name comes from the battleground itself, which is near present-day Maumee, Ohio. A tornado likely passed through the area just before the battle, causing the destruction of an existing forest. The battle was a decisive victory for the new legion, and the loss was more than just a military defeat for Native Americans. A British fort at nearby Fort Miami's refused to shelter fleeing Native Americans, and the possibility that fleeting possibility of an alliance between the British and Native American groups evaporated. The Treaty of Greenville brought an end to the Northwest Indian War. It was signed at Fort Greenville, Ohio by the United States and a coalition of Native American tribes. After Fallen Timbers, this treaty put an end to the war. The region would be, re, remain free of major conflict until the War of 1812. In the treaty, the U.S. compensated Native Americans for goods lost in battles in exchange for land. Roughly one-third of present-day Ohio, however, remained a Native American region. Unfortunately, the ink was barely dry on the document before white settlers began violating the ban on new settlements. You can see that northern, roughly northern third of present-day Ohio and parts of Indiana was supposed to be off-limits.